One of the important substances we learn to work with in internal alchemy is the great medicine, or otherwise known as the external medicine, the nei yao, or the, uh, the da yao. Um, and the, the da yao, the great medicine, comes in different aspects. It's all kind of the same thing, but there's different aspects we can access. And today I thought I'd share a, uh, a, a method, a technique for harvesting the, the external medicine and bringing it into our system um, for internal alchemy practice. Uh, this is a little more, this is an advanced technique, but uh, you're welcome to give it a try uh, if um, it's, it's not, not overly dangerous. Um, and it's a fun one, I, I quite like it. Uh, and so this, um, so first of all, uh, we have our body and its associated energies and um, we work it, uh, a lot of our practice with uh, Nei Gong and internal alchemy is learning to, um, to cultivate those internal energies uh, and the physical body uh, and the mind um, and work with uh, sort of our, this world aspect of ourself, right? And that's important. Um, and we call that uh, Hou Tian Gong or post, uh, post heaven practice, also known as Ming Gong. Um, and it's good, we need to do that. Um, and the physical body is the, the foundation of our practice and is where we start um, Tao's cultivation from. However, there is more. There's more to us than just our physical body, the thoughts in our head, and, uh, and even the energies in our body. There's more, there's more, more to this, right? And for the, the Taoists, how we, um, how we tune into that is through Xin Gong practice, otherwise known as uh, Xian Tian Gong, or, or post, uh, pre-heaven um, practice. Okay, and what that does is that takes us outside of ourselves and gives us access to, um, to the more eternal, everlasting parts of ourselves, right? Uh, the Ling and, uh, and other things. So this practice is a way to do that, okay? Uh, so what, it, what we do, um, I'll explain the practice first and then I'll go through kind of different points that we need to do, um, to be aware of, to, to actually be successful with this practice. Um, actually, I'm in here. I'm here in, in Beijing in a nice park in the morning here, and there's there's lots of people doing their practices as well. Uh, looks like a lot of good good quality um, Ming Gong going on. There's some Tai Chi, and uh, there's a singing guy behind me somewhere, and there's some 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 standing people. It's lots of fun. I love China. Um, so the practice we're going to talk about today is um, working with external images and bringing external images of our environment into our body um, right okay so uh, um, what we'll do is you can do this either standing or sitting uh, and this is an ancient Taoist practice been around for a long time uh, you can do it standing or sitting um, and you'll need to close your eyes and regulate mind and body to become still, right? So, sin, sin shen da ding, uh, the, the mind and body be, become stabilized, right? And very still. Um, oh, before we do that, uh, you'll need to find something to look at, right? So this practice involves um, looking at something outside of yourself, maybe a beautiful, uh, seen in nature, like a, a mountain, um, the ocean, um, whatever it is. Um, you want something that has inherent uh, pre-celestial original chi, right? So pre-celestial original chi is what we're looking to to work with and integrate into our system, right? Uh, and pre-celestial original chi, a pre-heaven original chi. Is, in this context, is is the chi of the the natural cosmic world. So there's a sphere, the the the, the outer sphere, right? Um, so it can be either you know the stars and the constellations, the sun and the moon. They call the external sun ball, the external three treasures: the sun, the moon, and the stars. Um, or we can just work with uh, mountains and forests and, and and that sort of thing. Okay. So this is generally best done. It's, it's tough to do in the city. You need to get out, get out of the city, 
um, find a beautiful scene. Um, find a place where no one can see you as well. It's, it's best not to practice this stuff when people can see you, um, especially when you're working with stuff outside of the body because it empties the body and it's just best not to be seen. Uh, so find a little hidden spot and um, look at a beautiful, you know, beautiful mountain or something and then close the eyes, regulate mind and body to become still and stable. And then um, open the eyes and just look at the scene and just take it in. Don't move your eyes around too much. Just sort of just open and just see um, a, a, an image, right? You, you, you don't want to kind of look at it from different directions just from one direction right in front of you and just take it in um, and just take in the beauty of it um, let it fill you with gratitude all that kind of you know fun stuff um, and clearly see it okay and then what you're going to the second next step is inhale and as you inhale draw the image towards you right so you're going to use a little bit of visualization here draw the image towards you and as you do that close your eyes and then go through the celestial eye bring the image so you're going to have like an image in your mind's eye because your eyes will be closed now bring it through the celestial eye third eye and down the internal central line of the body into the lower abdominal cavity if you have a, a, a dantian, then you can put it in the dantian. If not, just fill the lower abdominal cavity. You can put it in, a, in other areas in the body. You can put it into organs, um, different. You can put it in the middle, the middle palace as well. It, it's you know, it's it's up to you. But to start with, I think it's always best to start with the lower dantian um, in the lower space. I think it's, it just it works easier. Get it in and just you're slowly, right, um, move the image down the internal center line of the body um, into the lower space and then just hold it there. And then breathe with it. When you breathe in, image contracts. When you breathe out, image expands. Breathe in, image contracts. Breathe out, image expands. You can do this for for a while right until we have what's called qi hua and qi hua is just energetic transformation uh, and so that's that, that there'll be some sort of energetic shift that happens with the image inside the body um, it might heat up might feel some see some brightness might be some movement whatever that is just pay attention to it and just hold it hold it inside the lower cavity um, no random thoughts right can't be any random thoughts and just hold it there for a whole session right you can do an hour two hours three hours whatever um and then when you're finished you then take the image and this is important and return it so you return it up the internal center line of the body and out the celestial eye back to the image open the eyes and kind of compare um and then thank whatever the image was say hey thanks thanks for letting me uh use you my practice uh um, that's important and then notice how you feel you know you'll be a there'll be a difference right you'll feel different it's it, it can be quite subtle at first as with a lot of uh pre-heaven practice when you first get into it it's it's subtle stuff but it really can open up and it's i mean it kind of it might sound a little strange at first like that's kind of weird <laughs> You're, you're some, it's just like visualization, right? But no, we're working with energy because the image isn't what's important, right? It's the chi you're bringing along for the ride. It's the chi that you're bringing, right? And so just like working with chi inside the body, you're working with chi outside the body. And uh, so for some of you who've done you know done this for a while you'll you'll know there's a process that happens in terms of tuning into your chi and learning to work with chi with energy inside the body right and there's a process of um getting in touch with it i'm just gonna move my hand here um yeah i don't have my nice studio any right now because i'm traveling right so this is what you get you get hand <laughs> handheld iphone uh videos for youtube um so 
it's just like when you it's just like when you start with working with chi inside the body right there's a process it takes time to tune into it and get a sense of what it is and how to activate it how to mobilize it how to work with it um and then after some time uh it's it's very real it's very um it, the sensations will get stronger and stronger and you can't ignore it right and this is the same with with working with external practices like like this image practice there is a real sense of when you're going to the image and you bring it back you bring the chi with the image um and so what does that feel like well it's just like working with chi inside the body there's generally a coordination of um Inian. So Inian is the most important thing, your awareness. Coordinate with breath. That's optional, but usually good for beginners. Um, and some sort of body movement, right? I, for me, it's usually those three things that we coordinate together, right? So there's an inhale when you bring the, just like if you're doing the microcosmic orbit, right? And you're inhaling, you're bringing the chi up the spine, right? You have to focus your awareness, your breath and some very subtle body movements, right, of the spine to kind of keep it coming up until it comes up the whole spine and, and around. Same with this, right? So you're breathing in, you're bringing that image towards you, coordinated with your awareness. Your awareness has to be, um, has to be activated. You have, to, you have to have a sense of what your yin is. Um, and also physical movements. You're using your yan, your physical eyes. Your physical eyes, need to move so you, you first you look in the distance and then as you bring it closer to the celestial eye the eyes will become slightly crossed and looking upwards so you're you're guiding your you're guiding um the image with your physical eyes and that leads the third eye the celestial eye and they work together um if you're interested in in that sort of stuff which is kind of the basics for this practice then i have an online program um online course number five celestial eye goes through all of that stuff um anyways uh and so working with chi outside is it's just the same there's chi all around us right and we can learn to access it and, and work with it and and feel it and tune into it um and it's important we do as practitioners um, especially for internal alchemy it's a big part of the practice uh, so that's why i'm i'm sharing this one uh um publicly on youtube so um, so that's one thing you need to work with. And then when we bring it inside the body, you can, there's an, also an option with this one to stop right in front of the eyes and just look at the image with the eyes closed, right? So be, you can like shrink down the image into, I don't know, it looks like a quarter or a whatever, you know, some sort of coin um, uh, shape, right? So it's round. Um, and then you can just look at it. And that's actually a really good thing to do right in front here. Um, and what we do, it's called a qu yin liu yang. And it's um, to, to dispel the yin energy from it and just leave the yang and then bring the yang energy, the yang qi inside the body. Okay. Um, like anything, this takes practice. Um, this is a form of, um, there's also another distinction we talk about with this and that is uh, yin gong and yang gong and so um, yin practice and yang practice and so what this we're doing here is we want to work with it's a yang practice right so what we're doing and that means we are uh, in the context of spirit travel we are going into the distance outside of our body and we're bringing something back we're bringing a material back a substance back um, to the to the self to the body right uh, as opposed to a yin gong method, which would be just sort of doing some sort of visualization, right? So this is, yeah, we're working with an image um, and we need to visualize that image. When you see that and close your eyes, you're working with a, a visual image, but it's a little different because we are working with the energy of that image. Um, and we're not using visualization to change the image in any more. We're just seeing a passive kind of like a, take a snapshot. <laughs> and that picture uh, comes in right um and so it's it takes time but we can learn to bring that chi into our bodies and nourish our bodies um balance our bodies um it's uh 
it's an incredible practice. This stuff's so special, you know. Um, and we can use it. We can also go through the organ system. If you've done the the, the Malyo Cosmic Orbit with me or with Master Wong, my teacher, um, we can use this and put it through the whole organ system. Uh, so there's a certain sequence through the organs. There's lots of other applications we can use with this. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's... Uh, a, there's lots more we can talk about but it's um uh, quite a prof oh i'll give you a story too so uh we'll finish with a story everyone likes a good story so um this practice um my teacher master wong he spent most of like when was it like the the 60s and, and 70s doing cl cloud wandering around china Right, so there's kind of all this political stuff going on in China, and he's like, okay, he took off with his teachers, and they just did like a Taoist tour uh, for about for actually no, it was only about ten years um, during those times, uh, and uh, but that's that's a long time, and they act, and he met this Taoist um, on one of the mountains, I believe it was Wu Dongshan, um, but I'm not sure, and he was this old Taoist, and and what you do on cloud wandering tours is you go and you you learn things from other teachers you 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 obtain something you get something right that's the difference between normal travel and cloud wandering and so he went to uh wudongshan um and spent some time there with his with his teachers um and there was an old taoist there lived on a, in a cave or in a hut that's right high up on a mountain ridge somewhere and there was this beautiful ridge and the ridge looked out over these mountains right and this Taoist, his whole complete practice was this, um, this practice I just shared with you. He would just get up every early, early in the morning and the sun was rising, go see at a spot on a ridge, just kind of rocky outcropping. He'd sit there in, in cross-legged um, you know, meditation and he would do this. He'd just work with the, the mountain across, this mountain image across from his ridge and he'd just bring it into his body and then return it. And you do it for a few hours and that was that was his practice. That's what he did. And the rest of the time he's just, you know, I don't know, doing Taoist stuff, I guess. <laughs> Whatever those crazy Taoists do up on the mountains. Um, but, you know, like, yeah, food and all that kind of stuff. Um, but that was his whole practice. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of neat. Anyways, give it a try. Um, and uh, if you want more, if, if you like it and you want some more, you, you need because um, there's a lot of basics that are, that are required for this, uh, then check out my online program or my book series, uh, The Taoist Alchemy of Wang Li Ping. Um, right now there's two volumes. I'm working on volume three. Um, and that goes over the basics, right? So, Because initially what's going to be challenging with this practice is, one, using the celestial eye, mobilizing the celestial eye, figuring out how to get substance chi from afar to you, work with it and then bring it inside the body that takes practice and then two and this is even more basic is just being able to get inside the torso right so a lot of qigong and tai chi you know it's good for it, it, it a lot of it doesn't go deeply inside the torso the way internal alchemy does and so if you want to do internal alchemy um, then you need to get really comfortable being inside the body with your awareness and spirit uh, your shen, right? Your shen, you getting your shen into the body, uh, and that just takes practice uh, and and methods and methods. You need methods to work at it. There's specific methods we do, um, body pour breathing, um, and various different methods. And if you want those methods, then check out my online course as well. Um, okay, uh, so that's I'll say uh, say goodbye to you from from uh, from Beijing. Just kind of hanging out. That's a nice little pagoda here. Um, there's a fellow across from me doing his thing. And, oh, the Jandron people have left. Um, I think there's a Singhi person still doing his thing. Um, I'm going to bust out some Liu Habafa here in a moment. Okay, uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Um,